Hello there and welcome once again to Sitam Church Online. In our previous video, we were talking about the digital economy. This topic that we really, really need to get a little bit deeper into and just understand what exactly does it entail. Welcome once again to our second video where we'll be talking about digital assets in the digital economy. And with me on set is the awesome and amazing Rosalyn Wanjiro. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much also for, for just coming in, you know, and pouring your knowledge and sharing with us um, concerning the digital economy. So in the previous video, we were talking about um, what it entails, what is the digital economy. Yeah. Uh, right now, we just want to get to know a little bit more on digital assets. What are digital assets, Rosie? Right, thank you. So for context, just for someone who is um, watching this for the first time, mm. digital economy, as I said, is the aspects of industry or business which run on online platforms. So when you think about trade hailing, ordering services, e-commerce, all this is part of the digital economy. economy. Mm. Now what are digital assets? These are, of course, uh, tools or instruments which, of course, gain value over time. Because by the strictest definition, an asset is... Um, a tool or an instrument that will bring a certain appreciation of your income or capital mm. over time. So when you think about assets, um, you're talking about real estate, you're talking about um, stocks, you can talk about even livestock because mm. presumably if you have a um, couple of cows and goats, sheep, okay, they're bringing yeah. in um, you know, a certain portion of income daily over time because you're um, trading whatever it is they produce, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in the crop uh, farming line, mm -hmm. then you're looking at your crops as your assets, mm, right? Mm. Now, um, in the digital asset space, then what is a digital asset? asset it's yeah. a tool or an instrument then that will bring or increase in value over time. Mm. So what are these? We begin with the basics of stocks. So for example, you can hold um, stocks at the Nairobi Stock Exchange yes. or whichever stock exchanges in your country, right? Mm -hmm. um, the largest exchanges in the world are New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. They trade in trillions every day trillions of dollars, mm. um, Singapore Stock Exchange, right? So in every country, every region, there's a major stock exchange. Mm. Um, I'd be guilty of not mentioning NASDAQ <laughs> being in the, <laughs> you know, in the tech space, but yeah. um, as it goes, stocks. Okay. In each of these major stock exchanges, there are more profitable stocks, the less profitable stocks. Okay. It just depends on the performance of the companies and if they've listed publicly or privately. Mm. Then you have bonds. Bonds are more uh, more of traditional or less risky instruments because they are uh, mostly issued by governments uh, whereby you can hold a bond over say a short period of time or a long period of time. They of course require higher capital investments than mm. stocks but um, they are one of the most stable forms of uh, digital assets that you could consider because they are not risky and in any sense uh, you are typically lending to the government mm -hmm. so the government must pay it's debt, yeah. right? I know that a lot of times we say the government is indebted to China and IMF, but there are even <laughs> private investors who, mm. who are creditors to the government. Mm. Uh, then we have mutual funds and unit trusts. These are often offered by uh, insurance companies. Uh, again, for disclaimer, not to market for them, but since they exist for knowledge purposes, yeah. like CIC, Britam, uh, UAP, uh, Old Mutual, you, if you look at these instruments, they offer about 7% to, uh, on the higher side, 8 9% annual return per year. Mm. And you find these are instruments which exist for investors who do not want to be exposed to risk, very high risk. Then uh, aside from stocks, bonds, unit trust, then you have uh, futures and deri derivatives. Mm -hmm. They may not be as widely known as stocks, but um, they are keen to, they are good to actually explore if you have done the research to get into them. Uh, I will not call Forex strictly digital asset, that okay. is a foreign exchange of currencies. Mm. But again, if you do your research and you train in depth in that uh, particular line, um, you'll be able to understand how to gain value from trading currencies. Mm -hmm. There are uh, metals and commodities like gold and silver, uh, precious metals, mm. rare metals as well. Uh, because again, you're not going to go hold physical gold in your house. Mm. <laughs> what you do is you trade um, a specific holding of money for gold and uh, it appreciates in value over time. Then seventh is, uh, of course, digital assets such as uh, now digital currencies or digital tokens, mm -hmm. otherwise known as cryptocurrencies. So I prefer to term them as digital tokens simply because not all of them are currencies. Mm -hmm. Some of them are simply um, exchange methods, payment methods. Mm -hmm. So if it's a payment method, you strictly can't call it a currency. Some of them are stores of value. 
So again, can't strictly call them a currency. So a lot of confusion comes around uh, cryptocurrencies, but if you look at them as digital tokens, just like loyalty points, then you'll understand their exchange and how they, uh, you know, how they're traded in value over time. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want us to just talk about the young millennial who's probably watching this. Yeah. And they've just gotten an internship somewhere, probably, or a job somewhere. And they're asking themselves, where do I start when it comes to digital assets? Now that we, you've broken it down to those um, eight parts. Yeah, seven how, parts. Yeah. Seven parts. Yeah. How, does, how do they start? Where should they start? Knowledge. Mm. Take your time to research. Start from the ABCs, even if you're a finance professional, because... Um, unfortunately, one of the things that happens to uh, finance professionals, you assume you know, but you realize you don't have these accounts. <laughs> Down the line. We are, you yeah. know, we are often guilty of that because yeah. you know the fundamentals of the market. Mm -hmm. You know the theories, you know the models, you train professionals, you even consult in this, but you don't have the basic accounts mm. and assets. Your money is not where your mouth is. <laughs> so even if you are, uh, you know, you're not a finance professional, there are financial literacy groups like uh, Abojani, which actually take you through the basics from budgeting to um, managing debt mm. now setting up your account so if you do not learn i am sorry do not even try yeah you know because this is where scammers come and thrive on your mm. lack of knowledge somebody comes and tells you hey, which is what we are going to be talking you know, about in yeah the next so video, i need to touch yeah. on that as an extremely important Excellent. beginning point mm. learn the basics because the fundamentals do not change and if you try to escape them by thinking it's a get-rich-quick scheme, mm. I am sorry, you will lose. You will lose heavily. So by starting how to learn, second thing is now the financial discipline to choose which instruments work for you. Because if you are not, uh, you know, you can't handle too much risk, then don't go for stocks and digital currencies. Yeah. You know, digital tokens and the, the bitcoins and the like. Yeah. Go for bonds. Mm. Go for unit trust. At least you will see your money grow mm. over time. If you can handle the risk and you, of course, have done the research, mm. then you can start, for example, with um, stocks, get into the forex and maybe now crypto, crypto assets. Okay. So it depends on your learning. If you don't get the basics right, please don't even put your money there. If you can understand the basics then and plan for your risk and then at least align um, your financial goals, because um, you, if you rush to investing without even putting in like the basics of your, your expenses, um, your insurance here and there for either health or whatever else you need to insure like for your business. Why are you putting money into something risky? If you lose it, you? You lose it. Yes, you yeah. lose it, you lose it and it's extremely painful. So I must emphasize as boring as it may feel, <laughs> beginning with learning yeah. and take it from you know the ABCs so mm. that once you determine that, then you set your financial goals. Now you can start putting aside money from um, because again, you also have to talk from a millennial perspective, we are in that space where we have um, ir irregular income. So, That's you know, if, if I tell somebody today, start by putting 10,000 into true. this, yeah. it's not working. It's not yeah. going to work, right? Mm. Because someone is looking at earning from their their side hustle or the main hustle, mm -hmm. taking care of a few things, mm -hmm. uh, contract jobs, you know, gig economy as it is. Mm. So in dealing with irregular income, you still need the basics. Learn, your, learn the first, then determine your risk and your financial goals, then you can start with your investing journey in a responsible way. Mm. Yes, because it's not about it's not about gambling. It's not about betting. It's not yeah. about uh, get rich quick. Mm. Those things will mess you up real bad. Quick fixes. Yes. Yeah, so you yeah. need you need the foundation to be set right for you to be able to grow in a in a sustainable way. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, you talked about risk and risk factors. I'd like you to touch a little bit more on risk assets mm -hmm. and non-risk assets. All right. So yeah. on the side of non-risky assets, mm -hmm. uh, which again, a lot of um, investors prefer, it's that, and again, if you are just starting on your investment journey, please start with non-risky assets. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about on this side, uh, bonds, talking about unit trust, and uh, most, most will fall in between these two categories, right? Then on the riskier, and some stocks actually are non-risky, because mm -hmm. for example, in the Kenyan context, um, buying stocks like Safaricom, over time, they've been a profitable company. Mm -hmm. So arguably you can see that they're on the safer side of mm -hmm. buying. 
But on this other side of more risky assets, mm. uh, still you're talking about stocks, for example, in the tech space. Mm. Um, let me give a good example of Netflix. In mm. uh, 2020 lockdown period, a lot of people were home. What were they watching? Netflix. But now people are, you know, arguably not as not as much at home. So what are they not watching? <laughs> <laughs> so if you bought text, to, if you bought Netflix stock yeah. then and now, yeah. um, you got into the hype. Now you're mm. seeing the loss. But if you understand market cycles, you're able to understand that there are highs and there are lows right mm. um, so they st talk about stocks then crypto assets of course forex forex is extremely risky yeah but again if you learn the ropes and you know how to um, manage your risk portfolio then you'll be able to um, spread so to speak your eggs on these baskets yeah yeah excellent wow yeah. that's a wealth of knowledge um, I think in the, we, I'd like us, like we mentioned before in the next video, let's touch a little bit more on these quote unquote guys who drop a DM on your IG and they tell you, I am an investor, I'm a digital economy investor. Guys, are you, are you willing to, you know, get into this wagon with me? Mm -hmm. I think we'll talk about that um, much later. Yeah. But other than that, the essence of this um, video is just to help the guys who are watching understand that God hasn't just called us into physical well-being, into mental well-being, into spiritual well-being, but he has also called us into financial well-being so that we can use these finances to expand the kingdom, which is our main mandate, you know, as children of God. And thank you so much also once again for sharing your knowledge. You're I'm looking forward to the next video. Thank you so much, guys, for watching Sitam Church Online. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this video, comment, let us know what are some of your questions. Probably you have a couple of questions concerning this topic. We'd love to answer them. Um, in the next video, we will be looking at a little bit more on um, these scammers that we are seeing online, you know, and how do you identify from somebody who is legit and somebody who is not legit you can also catch us on facebook twitter instagram and youtube until next time god bless you